The engines on the Fat Controllers Railway were busy clearing their railway, but need some broken branches. Thomas and Rosie often worked together. One day, Thomas helped Rosie to a water tower. Thanks, Tommy Pie. Anytime, Rosie Poo. See you later. Bye. Rosie felt much better after her long drink, but the trucks were bought. Oi, let's break away. Okay. <laughs> Their loads were heavy and the couple inside. One snapped. Whee! Oh crap, not again. Faster, faster. The sign read slow, steep bends and ravine ahead, but the silly trucks never saw it. Then it was too late. Rosie arrived at the scene of the disaster. Her driver sighed. This was our fault. We didn't secure them properly. We'll have to get help to pull them out. I just know the fat control will be pissed off with us. And he was. You, my fine friend, will shunt trucks in the yard until I can trust you again. Well, either that or as soon as I've finished eating my breakfast. The wife's made it especially for me. Eggs and bacon. Again. Blimey. I could really go for some cake right now. You lot fancy some cake? Some chocolate cake? Oh, just think about the cake. James, being the big red douchebag he is, was delighted with Rosie's dilemma. <laughs> fancy not securing your own trucks on the hill. They'll come back to spook you at your cute little funnel. Well, who's to say that you're not afraid of ghosts, you big stuck-up son of a bitch? Pah! Ghosts! Things that go bump in the night are bullcrap! Oh, I'll tell you a story that'll make your funnel quiver, James. A long time ago, a little engine was returning home. It was a misty, moonlit night. As the engine crossed the old iron bridge, he suddenly lost control and plunged over the side into the swamps below. He was never found again. But many old workmen will tell you that when the moon is full, they have seen the little engine trying to get home, but he never reaches the other side. So what do you think of that, James? Nonsense. There's no such thing as ghosts. Never mind him, Rosie Pooh. He'd be frightened if he really saw a ghost. This gave Rosie's driver an idea. Let's play a trick on James. The next day, he spoke to James's driver and fireman, who agreed. Well, this is kind of childish, but we'll do it anyway. Tonight? Tonight. James had to take empty trucks to the coal mines, and then bring coal trucks back. James's driver decided as part of the plan to cross the old iron bridge. Haunted bridge. Bah! It's as tame as a pet rabbit. But all the same, he kept thinking about Thomas's story. When dusk fell, he was keen to leave. If we don't go now, Gordon will take my favourite place in the sheds. We can't go back until we've collected all the trucks, James. He could see that plan was working because James was nervous. When night fell, they set off. The moon was full, and the mists were rising around the old iron bridge. James whistled, and the sound echoed everywhere. Then ahead, he saw flickering lights. His driver knew they were only little insects that shined brightly at night, but to James they looked like an engine. Next, his driver secretly threw a rock from the cab into the ravine below. It's the ghost! Take me back! Take me back! Please! When James reached the safety of his shed, he closed his eyes tightly, 
spoon diet, James. <laughs> no, I'm asleep. I can't hear anything. <laughs> and he refused to open his eyes. He did, though, when he thought his driver wasn't looking. Just to make sure that he was still there. Can you believe it, guys? They left us out of the Halloween show. Are you sure the studio phone is working? Hang up. They could be trying to call right now. I knew we should have left them a muffin basket. Second call. You're the kitty speaking. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Just a second. Did we want to appear in the latest Curry's PC World advert? Eh. Work is work. 